Good morning. And welcome to worship, an especially warm welcome if you join us either virtually or in person for the first time. Just, uh, I know it's all confusing out there, mass, no mass, what, where, when, and how. So just want to be clear as we open up slowly and we give many options uh, for our members depending on their levels of comfort. So next week, next week things begin to change. At the 8.30 service, no change. Continues as we are, everyone will be required to wear masks. Uh, but at 10 o'clock, it will be different. This side of the sanctuary, the side towards the courtyard, will be reserved for those who have been vaccinated and masks will be optional on that half. On the other half, anybody can sit on the other half, the, towards the um, street, uh, but masks will be required in that portion of our sanctuary. Uh, then two weeks from today is our picnic. We feel we are able to do that safely, a little differently. We can't share all the, the you know, the big smorgasbord of food, but we will, the church will be providing the meat and the beverages and some snacks that then you can share at your individual tables. There's a sign-up sheet uh, that goes out in staying connected, so please sign up for that. Uh, also a reminder, you can still give help to give to our ride for Roswell, and there are envelopes in a basket on the table as you exit the, as exit the narthex. Uh, we also, as we go forward, as you can see, there's more singers and more microphones, so live streaming has become a little more complicated. It's not just changing the camera, but it's also setting sound levels. So if someone would be interested in doing that two, a couple of three times a month, uh, let me know and we'll do some training for that as we go forward. Anything else we need to be reminded of? If not, let the children come forward. May we join together in our call to worship. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Our first hymn is My Country, Tis of Thee.
us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those joys which you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I haven't said that in a long time, in a year. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Trusting in God's mercy, may we confess our sin. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change, open to us a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. in a position to condemn only Christ, and Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen.
prayer for illumination of the word. <clears throat> holy, holy, holy one, guide us by the spirit of truth to hear the word of life you speak, and to give all glory, honor, and praise to your threefold name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> our Old Testament lesson today <clears throat> It's taken from the third chapter of Exodus, verses 13 through 18. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Go and assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob has appeared to me, saying, I have given heed to you and to what has been done to you in Egypt. I declare that I will bring you up out of the misery of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to your voice, and you and the elders of Israel shall go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us go now a three days' journey into the wilderness so that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our psalm today is number 121. <clears throat> I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore.
seated. Our New Testament lesson comes from the 12th chapter of Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endures trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share his holiness. Now discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those trained by it. Here ends the lesson. Our text comes from Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely and run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Let us pray. Eternal God, as we seek to ponder the meaning of these words for our lives, may your spirit be so present in and among us that we might be led to new understandings. Amen. To get today, we gather for worship on Memorial Day weekend, and Kathleen and I moved to Attica in the fall of 1980. The following May, I was surprised at what so many of the families of the congregation were doing. So many of them, during the Memorial Day weekend, made plans to go to cemeteries and plant flowers on the gravestones of their families. Imagine that. My first reaction to this was, this must be some kind of Western New York custom. Much like fish fries and beef on wick and dingus day and sponge candy and butter lambs, you know, things I had never seen before. When I said to Kathleen, isn't it strange that so many families go to graveyards to plant flowers? We never did that. She gently reminded me that the reason was that when I was little, all our family graves were either in Sweden or Scotland. <laughs> and so I had to admit she was right again. There are many stories on how Memorial Day actually had its beginning. There are over two dozen towns and cities across the nation that claim to have started the observance. And it's likely that towns across the country spontaneously gathered people to honor those after the great impact of the Civil War. The government, though, wanted to give credit and to one community. So in 1966, Congress and President Lyndon Johnson declared Waterloo, New York, just down the throughway, to be the birthplace of Memorial Day. For there, a ceremony on May 5th, 1866, honored local veterans who had fought in the Civil War. The day at first was called Decoration Day in recognition of what occurred in cemeteries and at graves. The practice of decorating graves on Memorial Day is built on the very common practice of human beings putting items on final resting places as an act of remembrance. One of the purposes of Memorial Day is to remember 
and to honor the sacrifices of those who have come before us and to recognize those who gave their time and lives for a greater good. And so on Memorial Day, we remember all those who have come before us. This leads to our text for today. Therefore, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. The words surrounded by a cloud of witnesses reminds us that we are not alone in our journey of faith. You and I do not live solitary lives of faith. Rather, we are connected with our brothers and sisters in faith who have come before us. Now, the word clouds of witnesses can be read on several levels and with several different meanings. One meaning or message of the cloud of witnesses is how important it is for us to remember, to remember those who are gone. People go to graveyards and plant flowers and remember. Roger Sillers, a pastor of this congregation, was a chaplain during World War II, also the father of Bob, that's probably why he's best known right now, wrote an article for the American Legion magazine many years ago that calls on us to remember. It is called Memorial Day Dreams. They were dreamers, these young men we remember. They would gather on the fantail of the ship as it coursed through the iridescent sea on a warm tropical night, and they would talk. Talk of many things that might be, dream of what might become a, in a better world. They would shout and yell, snap their towels as they showered after a hard day of training. Then that night they would gather and talk of a dream. They would huddle in a hut while the typhoon spent its fury outside and they would talk, talk of a world with better ways to live. They would stand in their mud and sweat encrusted clothes and watch others carry a bag, knowing that inside was a body of a friend. They would pause and then talk and dream of a world at peace. We try to remember these fresh young faces, so young many hadn't known a razor for long. We know they are buried and some missing on little bits of islands in France, on Okinawa, in Korea, in Vietnam. We mustn't let their dreams be buried with them. They were realistic. They never really expected to be remembered too well aside from their mothers and their wives, but they wouldn't want us to forget their dreams. All over their, the world, their discarded tanks and landing craft, equipment, rust and rot, but we must never discard their dreams. They are dead, but we give them life when we remember their dreams." Unquote. When we remember those who have come before us, we are surrounded by witnesses. These memories can inspire and teach us. For many years, Ben Stein wrote a bi-weekly column for an online website called Monday Night at Morton's. Morton's is a famous chain of steakhouses known to be frequented by movie stars and famous people from around the globe. But a couple of years after 9-11, Ben terminated the column to move on to other things, and the final column was called, How Can Someone Who Lives in Insane Luxury Be a Star in Today's World? And in that column, he makes the case that true heroes, those to be remembered, are those who sacrifice for others. And I'd like to share a long passage from it. How can a man or woman who makes an eight-figure wage and lives in insane luxury really be a star in today's world? If by a star we mean something bright and powerful and attractive as a role model, Real stars are not riding around in the backs of limousines or in Porsches or getting trained in yoga or Pilates and eating only raw fruit while they have Vietnamese girls do their nails. They can be interesting people, nice people, but they are not heroes to me any longer. A real star is a soldier of the 4th Infantry Division who poked his head into a hole on a farm near Tikrit he could have been met by a bomb or a hail of AK-47 bullets. Instead, he faced an abject Saddam Hussein and the gratitude of all the decent people of the world. A real star 
the kind who haunts my memory night and day, is the US soldier in Baghdad who saw a little girl playing with a piece of unexploded ordnance on a street near, near where he was guarding a station. He pushed her aside and threw himself on it just as it exploded. He left a family desolate in California and a little girl alive in Baghdad. We put couples with incomes of $100 million a year on the covers of our magazines. The non-coms and officers who barely scrape by on military pay but stand on guard in Afghanistan and Iraq and on ships and in submarines and near the Arctic Circle are anonymous as they live and die. I'm no longer comfortable being part of the system which has such poor values, and I don't want to perpetuate these values by pretending who is eating at Morton's is a big subject. There are plenty of other stars in the American firmament, the policemen and women who go off to patrol in South Central and have no idea if they will return alive, the orderlies and paramedics who bring in people who have been in terrible accidents and prepare them for surgery, the teachers and the nurses who throw their whole spirits into caring for autistic children, the kind men and women who work in hospices and in cancer wards. Think of each and every fireman who was running up the stairs of the World Trade Center as the towers began to collapse. Now you have an idea of my idea of a real hero. We are not responsible for the operation of the universe, and what happens to us is not terribly important. God is real, not a fiction. And when we turn over our lives to him, he takes far better care of us than we could ever do for ourselves. In a word, we make ourselves sane when we fire ourselves as the directors of the movie of our lives and turn the power over to him. I came to realize that life lived to help others is the only one that matters." End quote. Ben Stein has it right. The cloud of witnesses have inspired him to become a better person. Learning the stories of the cloud of witnesses can give us inspiration for running our own race. And a last meeting of the cloud of witnesses is that they are present with us now. The resurrection of Jesus has penetrated the facade between this world and the next. Hebrews tells us we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Those who have gone on before us are present with us still. You know, the words that we usually use in our communion liturgy are quite old. Christians began to worship in English during the Reformation in Britain, and most of the wording we still sometimes use comes from the pen of Thomas Cramner, who was Archbishop of Canterbury. In a portion of the liturgy, just before we sing the Sanctus, the Holy, 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 the liturgy reads this. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we worship and adore thy glorious name. The words, all the company of heaven, are the key words which point to the great cloud of witnesses. It tells us that when we pray and when we sing, we pray and sing with those who have gone on before us. Now, I don't know how to say this without sounding a little bit like a science fiction writer, but I'm, and I'm not completely comfortable with it at all. Yet somehow, somehow, in a way we cannot fully understand, we are, live our lives in this age surrounded by those who have come before us. And you and I can gain strength for living today by knowing that when we pray, we are praying with Paul and with Peter and our loved ones who have died believing in Jesus. Now, be pointed, as a good Protestant, I would never pray to saints. We don't need another mediator with God. But I gain encouragement for my Christian pilgrimage when I realize that those who come before us can teach us, encourage us, inspire us, and pray with us. When I visit my hometown now, I often go to Bedford Union Cemetery. And unlike 50 years ago, there's a reason to visit. 
in one section over in one corner are the graves of my father's parents, his sister, his cousins, his aunts and uncles. In another corner are the remains of my parents along with my mother's parents and her aunt and uncle. As I drive into the cemetery, I go by the graves of my best friend's parents, uh, whose house I spent half my childhood at. In another place, I see the person who used to own the drugstore, and another who ran the gas station, and a, the woman behind the counter at the hardware store. It seems like my whole childhood is in that cemetery. And in that quiet place, as I reminisce, I'm inspired by their lives and remember that when I pray, they are still with me. So on this Memorial Day weekend, we are reminded by the writer of Hebrews that we are not alone. You are not alone. I am not alone. For we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us pray. Eternal God, on this Memorial Day weekend, help us amidst the celebration and fun to remember, to remember all those who have come before us, to be inspired by their witness, and be supported by their presence. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, uh, Michael, Mike Golden and friends, are going to share with you a song that I came across earlier this year, a song written by a kind of an obscure country singer. Uh, he didn't uh, sing the song, he didn't record it, it was recorded by many people, but the biggest recording, the biggest seller, were by the Grateful Dead, of all people. But this song points to the great cloud of witnesses. friends that I loved yesterday gone home they have gone home gone home the songbird that sings in the dale seems to say gone home they have gone home gone home they have gone home they've joined the heavenly fold they're walking streets of pure gold they left one by one as the work here was done gone home they have gone home gone home they have gone home Life here is lonely since they've gone before. Gone home. They have gone home. Gone home. They have gone home. The old weeping willow that stands by the door sadly sings. They have gone home. Gone home. They have gone home. They join. pure gold they left one by one as the work here was done gone home they have gone home gone home they have gone home the trumpet sound on the great judgment day gone home they have gone home gone home they have gone home we'll see all our friends that have gone on that way gone home they have gone home gone home they have gone home they join the heavenly fold they streets of pure gold they left one by one 
as the work here was done. Gone home. pray and our response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer let us let us pray O oh God in the spirit we pray for your church let us be faithful witnesses to the risen Lord making disciples baptizing and teaching and obeying everything Christ has commanded Lord in your mercy hear our prayer in the spirit, we pray for the earth. Teach us to be good stewards of your creation, caring for the earth that you have made so that all creatures may be fruitful and flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the spirit, we pray for all nations. Extend your reign of peace throughout the earth. Fill the strong with compassion and humility and crown the weak with honor and dignity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the spirit, we pray for this community. Help us to remember that you are with us always. Let those who worship sense your presence and those who doubt be strengthened in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the spirit, we pray for loved ones. By the holy kiss of your grace and peace, heal the sick, Comfort those who suffer, welcome strangers, and reconcile enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we offer up now, O Lord, all those for whom we wish to pray in the silence of this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray that prayer you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is O oh, Beautiful for Spacious Skies. Thank you. 
into the world in peace, confident that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, and may the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.